Uh, hi, uh, my name is Ahmed Lahan, and today I have to present a topic related to number left hand side of mini channel mixing for calculating the optimum flow rate. Uh, I have worked on numerical approach, so today I have to present this one is the numerical approach. But we also started a experimentation on that project. So, uh, my name is Ahmed and I have collaborated with Mr. Uh, Anwar and Mr. Hassan. Mr. Anwar is my colleague at the Institute of Space Technology. And Mr. Hassan is uh, our collaborator from uh, uh, Istanbul Medinet University, Turkey. So, what we have done in this project, we just we find the optimal flow rate when there is a heat sink and it absorbs this, it absorbs the heat and dissipate it to the environment or to some coolant. So what we have done is we found out the optimal flow rate for a single heat sink with the thicker flow rates. And also we have, uh, what we have done, we have done that we found out the stresses that are caused by the temperature as well as to, uh, when we increase the uh, flow rate, the stresses are also increased. So, to, so what we have done is we Totally, uh, uh, you know, uh, work on the equilibrium stresses to find out either the material is frail or not. If it is in the threshold range, then we can use that material. Otherwise, we increase the uh, uh, otherwise we increase the flow rate. So, what we have found that at 0.7 um, per minute flow rate, we observe that the temperature is 13.5, and that. Uh, uh, stresses produced in the heating heating is, is uh, from copper, so 124.2 megapascals are uh, uh, the stresses which are produced uh, uh, by by this uh, flow rate. So we have done uh, as we told earlier uh, earlier that I have used a numerical approach. So uh, the flow map, map distribution, the pressure flow, and local heat transfer coefficient are also determined by uh, by, uh, by by using empirical formulas in this time. So what we have done basically uh, in metric technique we use the metric technique to find out the challenge metric and after that we use this the thermal stresses thermal resistance uh, diagram to find out uh, the, the, the temperature and the uh, flow rate uh, heat transfer rate and then the flow magnitude. And what we have done, we also done, we also done the nano fluid thing in this project, like two phase mixture models using in this power. We also uh, we also concerned about the pumping power and the other geometric factors. So this is a thermal FSI project. Like uh, <clears throat> if uh, we use uh, thermal thing, then also use the fluid and solid thing. Like what is in the solid solid is in the structural thing. This is the uh, you know, uh, 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 this is uh, the structural stresses that we have to find out and uh, normalize them. So, uh, this is the thermal FSI uh, we worked on. These are the basic equations that we start that we are uh, using in our software. Like, I use the LCS CFX, so that's why I use these equations. Have a look at that. The last one, the alpha is equal to uh, alpha e delta t minus l over e is basically used in thermal FSI uh, thing that we have tried from the other equations of heat transfer and fluid flow and the structural dynamics. So, what is the thermal performance of the heat sink? Basically, we but our focus is on the uh, basically the heat sink, its battery, its shape, its channel shape, and then we move its material, and then we find out its flow band distribution, its uh, flow rate, and at that conditions we find out the threshold range of temperatures and the nuclear uh, stresses or the normalized stresses. So that's what we do in this program. 
so uh, the flow as we uh, as i told you earlier that the flow rate directly depends on the temperature so when the when we raise the flow rate the temperature is drawn but it will increase the thermal stresses also after analyzing this thing we found out that the heat transfer between the separated medium so the different flow rates are also increased in enhanced in that uh, heat sink so here you see that we use only one heat sink in this project and uh, this is the pin pin channel you see uh, we use the different pin pins and uh, you see this uh, diagram and this is the temp temperature uh, distribution and now here are some graphs which i have made like what is the effect of null number on the base temperature as i told you earlier increasing in the flow rate uh, decreasing in the temp base temperature so this is the inverse relation between the flow rate of the null number with the base temperature uh, I have uh, studied a mesh comparison with this, and uh, here you see that when we increase the mesh size, the temperature drops. Similarly, the effect of heat flux with respect to the, the null numbers with different mesh sizes. And this is very unusual, uh, unusual behavior or unusual graph uh, between the Reynolds number of flow rate with the law of mean temperature difference. This is uh, because of the meshing. And uh, in the previous slide, you also see that there is some glitch over there, like it is not straight. So, this is basically because of the mesh, meshing size or the problem. So we are working on it to solve this issue. So similarly, the result number effect on the overall uh, heat transfer coefficient. And this is the graph. You see that when we increase the Reynolds uh, numbers, thermal resistance also increased. And this is the uh, stress. When we increase the Reynolds number, the temperature, the equal stress graph increases with a different mesh size. So, where is our optimum flow rate? So, uh, I mean, if you see that at this point, like in the green one, at one mm mesh, we see that it is a nominal optimum flow rate at like it's at six thousand. Reynolds number is 0.7 uh, approximately. The flow rate, the equal stresses and the temperature are in a threshold range. So that's what we have found. So our conclusion is there is a, a higher volumetric stresses when we uh, increase the flow rate. Although temperature is decreased, but uh, temperature is dropped actually. The base of it is dropped, but the stresses is increased which affect the materials so uh, by, use, by using the different coolants and the nanofluids on the structural thing you can see that there is a huge difference this is a new field and we are working on their experimentation also to validate these results but here what we have done so far is uh, i have uh, to present in front of you thank you so much